So the problem with our 1995 Nissan 200SX aka Sentra in disguise is that the inner CV joint on the axle that goes to the transmission separated and popped out. Well normally you can put them back in but under closer examination this car has the wrong axle installed. It's an inch too short. I'll show you what I mean. It was probably meant for an automatic. So very close examination reveals that, it's hard to see here, the knuckles that go into that Y pocket are riding on the outside edge of the pocket, sort of half in and half out. So when he went around the corner high speed in the mud, gave it full torque, puts a little twist on the rubber motor mounts and separated it. So I think I put it back in to take it for a drive and test drive it. The car's working but I know if we drive it hard again it'll pop out. So last night when I was laying in bed I thought of an axle, axle lengthening technique. So let me show you what I'm up to. How to make an axle longer in this application without it spending any money for a redneck fix when you're out in the middle of nowhere. So first that's going to require removing the axle which remo means removing that nut and the ball joint nut. That's a tight one. Easiest way to get out a cotter key is never to push it out, it's always pull it out. Use your side cutters as a lever. Even if it's slightly bent, it can suck it right through and get it out. Perfect. Now once you've got your ball joint nut loosened or removed, there's two ways of getting the ball joint apart. The most common way destroys that rubber boot and pierces it, so your ball joint won't last much more than a year afterwards. You would do that by using a pickle fork and a big hammer. The way I like to use, if I want to save the ball joint, is jack up the rotor until uh, the car is just about lifting in the air and then whack that surface to break the Morse taper. The Morse taper is the tapered part that locks around the post of the ball joint. So here we go. Alrighty, take your big hammer or mini sledge, whatever you want to call it, and now whack it right there, really hard. There, it's separated. You usually got to hit them harder, but this way works and causes no damage. So I've got the ball joint completely separated now. Two ways to push down on the lower control arm. One is grab it with a great big pair of channel locks, pull it down. Or if that doesn't work well, I usually have a big long six foot steel bar and I jam it somewhere back there where the suspension attaches to the frame and push down. Sometimes I add a little block on it, push down, it brings down the arm and I can separate the ball joint. I didn't even have to take the axle out of the spindle. Anyways, I just twisted everything all the way around. There's that knuckle that it separated, it's still in good condition. There's a locking clip on there that holds this little drive hub to the splines on the shaft. I think if I get that clip off, tap this thing out about halfway, weld it here and weld it here, it's not a good fix for the highway. Good enough for my off-roads. I can get about maybe a half inch more length out of that axle. And this car will survive to die another day. <laughs> there, upon removal of the grease, you can see that clip really well. No problem taking it off. Done. Now I can just slip this thing a little forward. A few taps with a hammer. Oops, too far. So I've cleaned all the grease off so it doesn't contaminate my weld. This part and that part. 
and I'll set her about halfway out run my weld so I set my welder to maximum 130 amps and I'm ready to weld some bead right there little tack that's done now inside that end there now we're all set for reassembly simple as that pour some recycled rainwater on it keeps the bearings nice and hard and add some grease then put it back together. Well I do have to blow the water out of those needle bearings first so it doesn't displace the grease. Good enough. Now the dirty job. Someone's got to do it. Yuck. I felt slimier, slimier if you know what I mean. <laughs> Good enough. Now some for the pocket. Mmm, get her in there. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I'm just turning my arm, getting in that tight space, that's all. Now ball joints back in. And the part is riding deep enough into the pocket that it won't pop itself out again. If you have a problem tightening your nut on your ball joint and the whole ball joint shaft is turning, what you do put your jack underneath the control arm, lift up the control arm so there's a lot of weight on it, then uh, take your big hammer, whack the upper part down like that, the part the nut sits against and it helps set it and lock it against your Morse taper, then you can tighten your nut without everything turning. Just like this. Because my whole shaft was turning too. All done. So now I've got a long pry bar. Push the CV boot back because it's all ripped to help protect the mud from going in there. All done. Now for a test drive.